In this video, I'm going to show you how to make this realistic living room in Blender. This will be a beginner's tutorial, so I'll make sure to make it as simple and easy as possible. And if you enjoy the video, don't forget to subscribe. Step 1. Model the room. Okay, first we're going to select everything and press X to delete. And then we're going to press Shift A and add in a cube. And then we're going to press G, Z and hold control and bring up the cube. Then next we're going to tab into edit mode and then we're going to press number pad 3 to go into face select mode. Then we'll select the move tool and then we're going to drag the face along the X axis by 18 meters. And we'll drag this face along the Y axis by 10 meters. And then we'll select the top face and we'll bring it up by 6.5 meters. And then we'll select the top face and the bottom face. And then we'll press I to inset the faces in by 0 0.5. And then we'll right click and bridge the faces together. And now we've made the walls of our room. Then we'll tab out of edit mode. And then we'll right click and select origin to geometry. And then we'll press Control A to apply scale. And now we're going to press Shift A and add in a plane. And then I'm going to go over to the snap button and turn it on and change it to snap to vertices. And then we're going to press G to grab our plane and snap it to the top of the wall. And then we'll tab into edit mode and then we'll press 1 to go into vertices mode and we'll snap each vertice to the edge of the wall. And once we've done that we'll tab out of edit mode and select origin to geometry. And then we'll press Shift D and bring down this plane to be the floor of our room. Now that we've made a simple room, let's make a window. Okay, first we're going to start by pressing Shift A and adding in a plane. And then we'll use the Move tool to bring the plane to the side. And then we'll press the full stop key to zoom in. And then I'm going to press RY90 to rotate the plane. Then I'm going to tab into edit mode. And then we're going to press E to extrude by minus 0.1. Okay, now we're going to select this face and we're going to pull it along a bit on the Y axis by minus 0.7. And then we'll select the top face and we'll bring it up a bit by minus 0.1. Now that we've made the basic shape of our window, we're now going to select this face and the back face and we're going to press I to insert them in. And then we'll insert the windows by 0.095. Then of course we'll right click and bridge the faces together. And then we'll right click and set origin to geometry. And then we'll press Ctrl A to apply scale. Okay, now that we've made our simple window, we're going to press Alt D to duplicate it and snap it to the side. And then we're going to select both and we're going to press Alt D again. And we're going to snap it on top. And now we've finished our window. Okay, now we're going to make our scene a bit more tidier by naming all the objects in the scene. So I'm going to select the wall and double click it to rename it wall. And I'll do the same with the ceiling. And then we'll do the same with the floor. And once we've done that, we'll select all four parts of the window and we'll press M to make a new collection. And we'll call it window set. Okay, once we've finished that, I'm going to select the wall, tab into edit mode. We're going to select the loop cut tool and we're just going to make a cut right here in the middle of the wall. And then I'm just going to zoom in and press Ctrl B to bevel it. And then we'll just press X to delete the faces. And now we'll go into vertice select mode. And then we're going to zoom in and click the select tool. And now I'm going to select these four vertices and press F to fill them in. And we'll do the same with the other side, we'll select the vertices and press F to fill them in. And then I'm going to select these four vertices and just pull it to the side a bit. Make sure that you've got all of the vertices selected though. And after we've done that we're going to select our window set and move it into the space that we've made for it. And then we'll just snap it to the corner, move it down a bit. And then we'll select the wall and go back into edit mode. 
and then we'll select the vertices to move the face to snap next to the window. Then I'm going to select these two vertices and press the full stop key to zoom in. Then I'm going to press Shift D and press GZ to bring it up and I'm going to snap it to the bottom of the window. And then we'll do the same with the other side. And then once we've done that I'm going to select these two vertices and these two on the other side and press F to fill them in. Make sure not to um, select the other one like I did, so I'm just going to redo that. Then we're going to do the same with these two at the top, so I'm going to select them and the other two and press F to fill it in. And we'll do the same with the ones inside the room too. And once we've done that, we'll do the same with the ones on top, so we'll do the same process of selecting the vertices, pressing Shift D, moving them down selecting them and pressing F to fill them in. Now that we've got our window in our room, let's move on to the next step of adding a camera. So I'm just going to move it to the right spot, then I'm going to press Shift A, add a camera, and then we're going to press Ctrl Alt 0 to snap our camera to view. And then I'm going to go into Object Properties and to go on the x-axis and move the camera a bit more closer in. Then I'm just going to move the camera around a bit. Now we'll go back to Object Data Properties. And now we're just going to play around with the clip start so that we can see into our room. Then I might just bring the camera in a bit more and bring the pass part out all the way up. And now I'm going to go over to Output Properties and we'll change the resolution X to 1080. And now I'm going to press G to move the camera and use the wheel, my mouse wheel, to scroll in. And then we'll go back to Object Data Properties and we'll play one with the clip start a bit more until we get it looking white. And then I'm just going to play around with the camera until I get it looking the way I want it to. Okay, now I'm going to add a bit more detail to our room. So I'm going to paste in this coving that I made earlier, which is the moulding that goes around the wall of the room just below the ceiling. Okay, once you have it in your scene, we're going to head over into top view. I'm going to hide the ceiling by pressing H. Then I'm going to select the coving. I'm going to move it over and snap it to the wall. And then we're just going to move it about until it fits inside. And now we're going to tab into edit mode. We're going to turn on x-ray mode and we're going to select these vertices and we're going to use the move tool to move it into the right position. We'll do the same with these two. And now our coping fits inside of our room. Now I'm going to set the coving's origin to geometry and then we'll go into camera view to see how it's looking. The coving hasn't been moved into the right position so I'm just going to fix that. So I'm going to tab back into edit mode and move the vertices into the right corner. And by doing that we've just added a bit more detail to our room. Okay now we're going to give this thing a name so we're going to double click on it and call it coving. Ok next we're going to press Shift A and add in another plane and we're going to move this plane into the corner of the window and then we're going to press RY90 to rotate the plane and we'll snap it to the corner of the window and then we'll tab into edit mode and we'll move the vertices to fit the edge of the window and then we'll tab out of edit mode and set origin to geometry and then I'm just going to move this plane into the middle of the frame and if you haven't guessed already, this is going to be the glass for our window. And now we're going to press Alt D to duplicate the glass and we'll snap it to the bottom of the window. And then we'll select the two of them and we'll press Alt D again and snap it to the other side of the window. And that's the glass done. And now that we've done that, we've pretty much finished modelling our room and we can move on to the next step. Before we move on to the next step, I'm just going to quickly paste in a glass material for the window before we start lighting our scene. Now I'm going to head into material preview and I'm just going to zoom into the glass material and this is going to be what we're going to be using. So I'm going to select the glass plane that we made. I'm going to open up material properties and I'm going to change it over to the glass material that I've pasted into the scene. Okay, now I'm going to select the glass sphere and press X to delete. So now if we go into camera view, we can now see that our window now has a glass shader. 
Okay, next we're going to select one of the window frames. We're going to click open the modifiers tab. We're going to add a new bevel modifier to the frame and I'll give the bevel amount 0 0.005 and we'll give the bevel three segments and we'll right click and shade the frame smooth and we'll select all the other frames and then we'll select the first frame and we'll press Ctrl L to copy the modifier and now you can see all of our frames now have the same modifier and then we'll shade all of the frames smooth so now if we go back to camera view you can now see that our window has bevel step 2 light the scene okay before we start lighting the scene I'm going to first select the four pieces of glass and press M to make them into a collection and call this collection glass and then I'm going to unhide the ceiling then I'm going to select the ceiling, wall and the floor and I'm going to press M to make a new collection and we'll call this collection room and then I'll rehide the ceiling and then we'll head over into render preview mode and then I'll select viewport shading and turn on scene lighting and scene world then I'm going to press shift A to add an area light into the scene and then we'll move the camera out of the room and we'll bring it up a bit then I'm just going to move around the light until I get it into a position that I like then I'm going to press S to scale up the light and then I'm going to double tap R to rotate the light and then I'm going to continue to move around the light until I get it in a position that I like once I've finished doing that I'm going to go over to light settings and then I'm going to change the power to 400 and now as you can see we now have light in our scene and then I'm going to press shift A again to add another light and then I'm going to move it into the right position then I'm going to press S to scale up the light a bit and then I'll continue to move around the light and I'll continue to move it about and scale it up until I've got it at the right size and then I'll move the light up on the Y axis and I'll get it into a position that I like and I'll change the power of the light to 350 and now I'm just going to close the collections just to keep everything tidy. Okay, next we're going to select the light in the room and we're going to press Shift D to duplicate it. Then I'm just going to scale down this light and then I'm just going to press the full stop key to zoom in and then we're just going to bring down the light and then we're going to press RY to rotate the light to face the window. And then we're going to press RY to rotate the light again to face more of the corner of the room because that's where our furniture is going to be. And then I'm going to change this light's power to 100. And then we'll go back into camera view to see how it's looking so far. And now we've got light in our scene. And now we're just going to select the three lights and then we'll press M to make a new collection and we'll call it Lights. Okay, next we're going to add an HDRI to our scene. So I'm going to go over to World Properties and then we'll select the color and then we'll select the environment texture and then we'll click the open button and we're going to find wherever we saved our HDRI. This is the HDRI that we're going to be using for our render. You can find it at Polyhaven and I'll leave a link in the description below. And then we'll go over to the shader editor and then we'll click on viewport shading and we'll turn on scene lights and scene world. And then we'll change our shading from object to world. And then with the node wrangler enabled, we're gonna press Ctrl T. Then we're gonna go over to the mapping node and we're gonna rotate the HDRI on the Y axis. And then we're just going to rotate it around until we get it into a spot that we like. Okay, next we're going to go over to Wender Properties and we're going to change the Wender Engine to Cycles. And then we're going to turn off Overlays and then we're going to Cycles mode to see how our scene's looking so far. And then I'm going to unhide the ceiling. So I'm just going to find it and unhide it. And then I'll reclose all my collections. And now that we've done that, this is what our room looks like so far and we can now move on to the next step. Step 3. Add materials to the room. Ok now I'm going to press Command V to paste in our wood texture for our floor. And then we'll just move the texture to the side. And then we'll press the full stop key to zoom in on the texture. 
and this is going to be the material for our floor. You can find this material at Polyhaven where it is free to download and you can paste it into your scene like I did. Okay, once you have it downloaded and in your scene, we're going to next select our plane and then we're going to go over to material properties. I'm going to change our material to the wood texture and then we're just going to tab into edit mode and then we're going to press A to select everything and then we're going to press U and we're going to smart UV project. Okay once we've done that we're going to go into UV editing. Okay so we're going to select the vertices, we'll go back into camera view and into material preview mode and we're just going to scale them out so we can scale out the material a bit more. I'm going to scale it out by 5. And now our material looks a bit more realistic at the right scale. Okay, now we're going to go back to layout mode. We'll delete the sphere because we don't need it anymore. We'll go back into camera view to have a look at our scene. And then I'm just going to turn off the overlays and unhide the ceiling. Then I'm just going to rehide the collections. And then we'll go into cycles to see how our scene's looking so far. Okay, next we're going to add a material to the wall. So we're going to select the wall and add a new material. And we're going to give the wall just a slight yellowy orangey colour. And I'll change the subsurface to 1.6. And I'll give the subsurface colour a bit of a light peachy colour. And I'll change the subsurface to 0.1. And then I'll change the roughness to 0.55. So now if we open up preview, we can now see our wall texture. Okay, next we're going to add a material to the window. But first I'm going to select one of the frames and then we'll open up modifiers properties. And I'm going to change the bevel amount to 0.01 just to give the window frames a bit more detail. So we'll do the same with the other frames. And then we'll select all the frames and press Ctrl A to apply scale. And once we've done that, we are going to select just one of the frames, give it a new material, and I might make the material a bit brighter. And I'll change the roughness to 0.35, and we'll change the metallic to 0.1. And now our window has its own unique material. Okay, now we're going to select the other frames and then we'll press Ctrl L to link the materials. And now we've finished pretty much what we need to do with the window. Okay, before we move on to the next step, I'm going to first close the room collection and turn off the lights. Okay, now we're going to tab into edit mode, then I'm going to select a vertice and zoom in. And we're just going to fix this little problem that we're having with the wall. So to fix it, I'm going to tab into edit mode and then we're going to select these four vertices and we'll press X to delete them. Okay, now we're going to select this vertice in the corner and then we're going to turn back on snap to vertice so that we can now press shift D to duplicate the vertice and we're going to snap it to the one opposite it. And then we'll press shift D again and snap it to the other vertices. Once we've done that, we're going to select these two vertices we just made. And then we're just going to zoom in. And then we're just going to press shift D and duplicate them. And we're going to move these vertices so that they're underneath the window. And then we're going to select these four vertices. And then we're just going to press F to fill in the vertices. And then we're going to select these six vertices on the left and do the same and press F to fill them in. And then we'll do the same with the vertices on the other side. And then we're going to select these four vertices underneath the window and press F to fill them in. And once we've done that, we've now fixed the wall and the mesh looks white now. And we can now move on to the next step. Step 4. Fill the room with stuff. Most of the models that we'll be using in our scene are from the website Polyhaven, where you can download free models, materials and HGRIs. So if you want to, you can go to the website and find different models that you want to use for the room. All you need to do is click the download button and the blender file of the model will be downloaded onto your device. Or if you want to use the exact models that I used for the scene, then you can download the free Blender file with all of the models that I used for the scene in the description below. And also the ones that I personally made as well. To move our models into our scene, we're going to first select all of them. We're going to press Command C to copy all the models. 
And once we've done that, we're going to go back to the Blender file that has our room in it. And then we're going to press Command V to paste our models into our scene. And then we're going to press XG and just move it to the side. And now we have our models in our scene and we can start filling our room with stuff. Okay, first we're going to select the bookshelf. And we're going to press the full stop key to zoom in. And this is the bookshelf that I made to use for this render. And we're just going to use the move tool to move the bookshelf into the room. And we're just going to move it right in the corner of the room. And then I'm going to select the sideboard. And then we're going to press the full stop key to zoom in again. And this is the sideboard that I made to go with the bookshelf. And then we're just going to move it into the room. And then we're just going to zoom in and I'm just going to first go over to collections and turn off the lights to make it a bit more easier to put stuff into the room. And then I'm just going to press RZ90 to rotate the sideboard so it's facing the right way. And then we're just going to turn on snap to vertices so that we can snap it to the bookshelf. And we're just going to make sure that it's snapped right to the edge of the bookshelf. And now we have our bookshelf and sideboard in our scene. So the next thing we're going to put in our room is the sofa. So we're going to select all the different parts of our sofa. And we're just going to move it into the room like we've done with the others. And we're just going to push it so it's at the back of the wall. And then next we're going to select both parts of the rug. And then we're just going to move it into the room so that it's right next to the sofa. And then we're just going to bring it up so that it's resting right on top of the floor. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is select in the chair and we'll move it into the room like we've done with the other models. And then we're just going to zoom in and then we're just going to move the chair off the carpet. And then we're just going to press RZ to rotate the chair around so that it's facing the sofa. And once you have that in the position that you like, and we're going to next zoom out and select the coffee table. And then we're going to just move it into the room and then we're just going to zoom in and put it in place. So pause the video and put the coffee chair in a position that you like. And now we've got our main models in our scene. And then we're just going to go into camera view so that we can see how our render's looking so far. Off screen I have moved around the camera to get it into a better position. You can pause the video and do the same. Okay, now we're just going to quickly turn back on the lights and we'll also turn back on the ceiling and then we're going to turn off overlays and then we're going to go over into render mode to see how the scene is looking so far. I think it's looking pretty good so far, so now let's bring in the other models. Okay, the next thing we're going to add to the room is the painting. So we're going to select it and press the full stop key to zoom in. So we're going to select the frame and the painting and move it into the room. So we're just going to zoom in on the room and we're just going to move the painting back to the wall. And I'm just going to turn off snap to vertice to make it a bit more easier to move stuff around. And we'll make sure that it's white on the wall. And then we're going to just turn back off the lights again. And then we're just going to zoom in and bring up the painting. And then we're just going to move it around until we get it into a position that we like. And then I'm just going to go into camera view to have a better look and just continue to move it around until I like the position. And then next we're going to select the ceiling lamp. And then we're just going to move it into the scene like we've done with the other models. And then we're just going to pull it up. And now we're just going to unhide the ceiling. And now we're going to turn back on snap to vertice. And we're going to snap the ceiling lamp to the ceiling. And now we're going to go into camera view. And then we're just going to move around the ceiling lamp until we get it in a position that we're happy with. Okay, now we're going to head out of camera view. And then we're just going to hide the ceiling again. Okay, now we're going to get the plant. So we're going to select that. And we're just going to select all of it and we'll move it into the room and then we're just going to move around the plant so that it's sitting on top of the sideboard and then we're just going to go back into camera view and then we're just going to move up the plant so that it's resting on top of the sideboard and then i'm just going to move it around until i'm happy with its position and now we're going to go back into camera view again 
And now we're going to turn back on the lights. And now we're going to turn off overlays again. And then we'll go into render mode to see how it's looking so far. And this is how our room is looking so far. And now we can move on to adding the smaller models into the room. And now we're going to select the smaller models. We're going to move them closer to the room. But before we start putting these models into the room, I'm going to first paste in a book collection. And I'm just going to move it to the side here. And you can find this book set in the description below or at Polyhaven. And then to make our scene a bit more tidier, we're going to select all the books and press M to make a new collection and we'll call it books. And now we can move it into the scene and I'm now going to close the book collection just to keep everything more tidy and also do the same for the worm collection and I'll turn back off the lights and then we'll zoom in and we'll rotate the books so that they're facing the camera and then we'll bring up the books so that they're resting on the sideboard then I'm going to head over into top view and I'm just going to move it into a better position and rotate it so that it's facing straight and then we'll go back into camera view and then I'll scale it up a little bit and then I'll pull it down so that it's resting on the sideboard and we'll move it a bit more to the side so it's not inside the bookshelf and I'll pull down the books just a bit more and then we'll just zoom in to make sure that it's resting right on top of the sideboard and then I'll just move the books so that they're resting right next to the bookshelf and now we'll go back into camera view again and I might scale it up just a bit more and then we're just going to move the books a bit more to the left so that they're not inside of the bookshelf. And I'm now going to go back into camera view to make sure everything is looking good. And now I'm going to go back out and just quickly check again that everything is looking okay. And now we're going to select the smaller models and we'll press the full stop key to zoom in. And we're going to first select the potted plant and we're going to move it into the room next to the coffee plant. And then we'll zoom in and we're just going to move it so that it's on top of the table. And we'll make sure that it's sitting right on top of the coffee table. So I'm just going to return on snap to vertice and snap it to the table. And we'll go back into camera view again. And I might just move it around a bit to get it in a better position. And we'll turn off snap to vertice to make it easier to move stuff around. And then we'll press RZ to rotate the plant around. I'm just going to continue to move it around until I'm happy with its position. And now we're going to head out of camera view. First we're going to zoom in on the tea set and we're going to select the tea set and we'll just move it into the room. And we'll move it closer to the coffee table and zoom in. And then we're going to move the tea set up and put it on the table. And I'm going to first select the teapot. Make sure that you select both parts. And then we're just going to move around the teapot until we get it in a natural looking position. And then I'm just going to rotate it round a bit. And I'm going to continue to move it about and rotate it until I'm happy with it. And I'm just going to move the plate and the cup to the side. And then we'll select the two plates and do the same with them. And then we'll move the cup and the plate into a natural position. So I'm just going to continue to move around the teapot models until we get them all in a position that I'm happy with. So you can pause the video and do this yourself as well. And once we've done with that, we're going to add the other models into the scene. So we're going to select these smaller models. Okay, first I'm going to select these two vasks and I'm going to move them into the scene and then we'll zoom in on the models and then we're just going to move the models into the shelf. And we're going to zoom in and move it into one of the shelves. And then we'll make sure that they're sitting nicely on the bookshelf. And then we'll head into camera view just to check that it looks well from the camera view. And then the next thing we're going to put in our bookshelf are these two little plants here. So we'll select the two plants and we'll move it into the room and put it on the bookshelf like we've done with the other models. And really it's just the same with the other models as well, we'll just select them and move them and rotate them into the scene and put them on the bookshelf. So you can go ahead and pause the video and start putting the models into the bookshelf yourself. And then we'll go back into camera view again 
and I'm just going to move and rotate around the models just to make sure that it looks good for the camera. Okay, I'm gonna just tidy up the scene a bit by putting stuff into different collections. First, I'll select all the stuff from the coffee table. Make sure that you do have all of the objects selected. And then now we'll press M and we'll make a new collection and we'll call it coffee table set. And we'll close the collection to keep everything tidy. And then we'll select all the different parts of the sofa. And then again I'll press M to make a new collection and I'll call it sofa set. And like we did with the other collection, we'll close this one as well. And then we'll do the same with all the stuff in the bookshelf. And we'll do the same of course with the painting. And then we'll also make the potted plant into a collection as well. And of course I'll close the collection. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to select the sideboard and I'm going to press M and I'm just going to move it into the bookshelf collection and I'm going to move the rug into the coffee table collection and now I'm going to move the chair into the sofa set and I'm also going to put the ceiling light into the room collection and I'm just going to move this second part of the rug into the coffee table collection and we're just going to go into render mode to see how our scene is looking so far with all the models in the room. But first I'm going to open up the room collection and we're going to turn back on the ceiling. And once we've done that we can go into render mode. And don't forget to turn off the overlays so that you can have a clear view. The scene is looking pretty much done and now we can move into the final steps of the tutorial. Step 5. Finishing Touches Okay, the first thing I'm going to do is press Command V to add these extra models to the scene to fill up the bookshelf. And of course, these models will be in the description below with the other models. And of course, we'll press M to move them to the book collection. And then we'll go back into Camera View. And next I'm going to unhide the ceiling. And then next I'll unhide the lights. And to make it more easier to see the camera view, we'll turn off the overlays again. Okay, next we're going to change the samples to 300, so we don't have too long of a render time. And then next we're going to go over to color management, and we're going to change the look to medium contrast, just to make the render a bit more vibrant. And I'm going to change the exposure to 1.1, just to make the render a bit more brighter. And I'm also going to change the gamma to just 1.05. And that's just the little changes we've done to the color management to make the render look better. And then we're going to make sure that in files, and then we're going to go down to external data, and we're going to make sure that automatically packed resources is ticked. And by doing that, all of the models and materials in the scene will be packed into the blender file. And then we're going to go over to Output Properties and we're going to find a place to save our render. So we'll click the folder icon, we'll find a place to save our render, we can give it a name, I named mine Apartment, and we can press Accept. And now we're pretty much done and we can go over to the Render button and click Render Image. And that's pretty much how to make a realistic interior in Blender. We hope you enjoyed this tutorial and don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.